speaking of Texas, we are honored to be joined by the Attorney General of the great state of Texas, Greg Abbott. General Abbott, good to talk to you, sir. Hey, great to talk to you guys. Welcome to Texas. We hope a lot of people will be loading up a U-Haul as we speak, making a one-way trip to Texas. You know, it's funny, General. I mean, we'll talk about the meeting in a couple minutes here, but there's, there's a couple of things I want to you know, pick your brain about. You, you, you just talked about you we're welcoming people to Texas. You guys in Texas, you're making no secret about it. You want gun manufacturers and gun businesses to move to Texas, uh, the, like uh, the, in the Colorados and the— Beretta and Maryland, and, and yeah. The Beretta and Maryland, where Andrew lives, and uh, you look at what's going on in Connecticut and, and, in the, and even in New York with sure. Remington. You guys are actively seeking out this business. Uh, are you seeing any fruits uh, of your labor yet, sir? We've seen—we uh, are seeing a lot of fruits to, the, uh, to our labors. Uh, we're having talks go on as we speak, and, and because they're going on, I'm not going to reveal any names. No, of course, sure. no, that's but, fine. But, uh, but uh, I've personally met uh, with manufacturers uh, and distributors and, and people involved in sales of, of both weapons and ammunition from other states uh, that are either in the process of relocating to Texas or in the process of considering doing so. And Look, you guys know and have talked about the reason why, and that is these other states are coming up with these onerous laws that make it difficult for anyone who's concerned about Second Amendment issues or guns or ammunition issues. Uh, and they know that Texas uh, is a place that will welcome them uh, and that we will never have uh, these onerous, restrictive laws that, frankly, I believe, violate the Second Amendment. Well, it's funny because I was just telling Cameron before we came on the show, we uh, there was a, a we thought a 90 percent chance my wife and I were going to be relocating to San Antonio in July. Mm-hmm. And I was really relishing the possibility. <laughs> I mean, I was I was actively looking at houses in San Antonio. I had decided where we were going to live. Yeah. I was all excited for making the big switch from the, the bluest state in America <laughs> to uh, one of the rock ribbed most American states in in the union. Yeah. Uh, and very terribly disappointed that I'm not coming down for, for that very reason. Well, if you love freedom, there's one place for you, and that is Texas. So I hear. If if you don't like freedom, if you like big government, if you like government telling you (laughs) what size size drink you can have (laughs) or what size clip you can have on your gun, Texas is not the place for you. All right. So, so General Abbott, you're you're talking about, you know, this will never happen. These these legislation will never happen. This onerous legislation, all this stuff will never happen. But— uh, if you read, uh, if you believe the Twitters and the, and the Facebooks and what all the kids are writing on these days, there is an effort to turn Texas blue. Um, you, as the attorney general of said state, uh, what do you think of this rumor uh, or this effort to turn the red state of Texas into a, a deeper shade of blue? We know that the Obama administration uh, has some of the people who've worked for them who come to Texas and they are actively working in the process to turn Texas blue. They're working on voter registration. They'll be working on voter turnout. And all that means is that uh, we on the conservative side will be upping our game. Uh, Texas uh, has the longest winning streak in the entire country as far as all statewide officials being elected Republican now for almost two decades. Mm. And we are not going to be relinquishing that anytime soon because the fact of the matter is, for one, people in Texas are conservative, but for another, we're going to go and fight for every single voter out there. And by doing that, we think that we will keep Texas a conservative state. But let me mention this one last thing for you, just for your listeners to understand this as a national issue. And that is Texas is the line in the sand. Because if Texas were to turn blue, and if Texas electoral votes were to go into the Democrat column and add those to California and New York, then the country would almost be irreversibly in favor of those who uh, espouse the liberal agenda. We cannot allow that to happen. And, and see, this gets to, you know, let's set setting partisanship aside. Uh, the, the bottom line is, for Texas, the philosophy works uh, you know, if if Texas was not if if Texas wasn't achieving, if it wasn't attracting businesses, if it wasn't uh, creating jobs, uh, it, it, you know, then then the the conservative philosophy would not be holding sway down there. Well, the the other thing too is I don't know the exact numbers, but Texas, if there was no, let's say Texas yeah. wasn't part of the union, the unemployment rate, which is obscenely <laughs> high now, would be obscenely yeah. high. <laughs> yes, <laughs> even more obscene. You know, I like obscenely since, since the time of, of the economic downturn that took place in 2008-2009, uh, nearly half of the jobs created in the entire country were created right here in Texas. Hmm. And things are going very fast. Something like four of the top ten 
fastest growing uh, states as far as jobs and, and population is concerned are, are, are right here in Texas. But the, the key point you're making, yeah. and that is the Texas philosophy is one that does attract jobs, that does attract entrepreneurs, that does allow people to come here and pursue and achieve their dreams. And it really is the exact opposite of what you may see in a state like California, yeah. where, where they believe in a system, frankly, that's far more like Greece uh, than it is uh, uh, the state of Texas. And so we're, we're fighting for your freedom, your independence, for your economic liberty. And if you believe in those things, Texas is the place for you. Uh, we are honored to be joined by Attorney General Greg Abbott of the great yes. state of Texas. Texas, of course, will be hosting the NRA annual meeting starting Friday uh, there in Houston. All weekend we'll be down there broadcasting live. One, uh, you know, I, I, you tweet a lot, uh, General Abbott, and I, I, I imagine it's you, not a staffer, because, I, I, you know, I just – your tweets seem very personalized, and it seems like you write in them. Um, so I, I hope you're as a pro- uh, prolific tweeter as I, as I imagine you to be. There, I wanted to get your take on something that uh, was tweeted out yesterday. Now, I don't mean this to be a Redskins versus Cowboys issue, but, but Redskins quarterback uh, Robert Griffin III, RG3, he tweeted this. He said, in a land of freedom, we are held hostage by the tyranny of political correctness. In response to that, uh, a man named Oliver Willis, who works for Media Matters for America, said, quote, don't do this. In other words, don't bash political correctness. Uh, Attorney General Abbott, you, when you hear something like that, when we're actually defending political correctness and, and don't even think about questioning it, um, just, uh, just as a social issue, you know, how do you feel about that? Well, let, let me answer your question, but if, if I could, let me answer the first part of your question first. Yes. And that is, I do all of my own tweets. Nice. <laughs> and for people to follow me, I, I write them all, and I'm at Greg Abbott, that's G-R-E-G-A-B-B underscore TX, TX obviously stands for Texas, yes. but you've got to put that underscore. Quick story, and that is, if you want to learn what's going on about, let's say, Second Amendment rights, Travis County tried to ban gun shows here, mm-hmm. and so I tweeted that if they try to ban gun shows, they'll be facing a double-barrel lawsuit from the Texas <laughs> nice. Attorney General. And so you get to learn things like that uh, awesome, if you sir. follow me on Twitter. <laughs> we but, will. But uh, to your second point, and, and that is, I did, I did see that tweet by RG3, who, by the way, uh, is a native Texan. Yes. We're proud of our American football hero in RG3. Yep. But we're also proud of him because he stands on principles like that. And what really concerns me is when you see other people in this country get all concerned that a high-profile athlete like RG3 may not be hewing to the political correctness line, mm-hmm. that he may have conservative views and, and uh, uh, you know views that – uh, don't believe we should all follow political correctness. And uh, I'm, I'm disappointed other people try to force him back in line, but I'm, they're messing with the wrong guy in RG3 <laughs> because he's a strong man of strong conviction. He's always been that way. Yeah. And if you've never met him before, uh, in, in addition to him being a remarkable athlete, he's a man of, of deep, soulful character. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's a, he's a guy to be truly respected. All right, so let's get to the annual meeting, Attorney General Abbott. You are, uh, I'm sure you're proud and honored and, and, and excited to have all these NRA members, Second Amendment supporters, it just invading your state this weekend, uh, starting, uh, they're already coming in, a lot of people are already there, uh, everything really begins officially this Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in earnest. What are you looking forward to, and and what is... What do you want people to see in Texas? What do you want people who have never been to Texas before? I, I, you know, luckily, I've been to Houston. I've been all throughout this, your beautiful state. People who haven't been there before, what should they get out of a visit to Texas? Well, several things. One, uh, if you're thinking about coming, you need to know that we're going to be blessed with some very nice weather. The conditions are going to be perfect for something like this. Uh, secondly, uh, it's going to be a, a huge event where people get to uh, join forces with others of like mine. But the third thing is hopefully they're going to get a taste for uh, the freedom and a robust uh, economy and the opportunity that we provide here. And we want people to leave uh, Texas knowing uh, that we stand for the philosophy that this country should stand for and hopefully leave uh, with the thought that, well, they may just want to come back and relocate to the state of Texas. 
you know, uh, that's course, my suspicion. Uh, of course, uh, some of the speakers are going to be Ted Nugent, who you're a big, uh, you know, I know you're deep friends with. Good friends uh, with Ted. Senator Cruz, of course, from Texas. Um, and, and before we let you go, just talk about Senator Cruz. Uh, you know, of course, it being a Texas senator, but his notoriety on on, on a national level and what he is doing in the Senate and as an, as an amazing representative, I would think you would say, uh, of the Lone Star State. Well, of course, we all saw him school Dianne Feinstein on what the Second Amendment really means, but you need to understand the deeper connection between uh, both Ted and me and Ted and the Second Amendment. Uh, before he was a U.S. Senator, Ted was my Solicitor General here at the Attorney General's Office, and Ted worked with me on two cases where we took the lead on behalf of more than 30 states across the country in briefing the United States Supreme Court in the Heller case, mm-hmm. in the McDonald case out of Chicago, uh, that secure, secured uh, the individual right to keep and bear arms. And so uh, this is nothing new for Ted. Uh, it, it, some people act well like it, it, he's just something new over the past couple of months. He's been this way all along. Yeah. He's a firm no, no, I've known Ted for the better part, of, a better part of a decade and, you know, truly committed conservative guy. Exactly. And, and so he, this is a man who probably knows more about the Second Amendment than anybody else in the U.S. Senate, but also is firmly rooted in constitutional principles. And so he is a fighter, uh, a true believer in the Constitution and liberty, and we're very proud of what he's doing up there in Washington, D.C. Attorney General Greg Abbott, at Greg Abbott underscore TX, one of my favorite uh, uh, people to follow on Twitter. I I highly recommend you do the same. I'm following him now. And I also, uh, actually, uh, when we were at the uh, NRA 500 in uh, Texas, sir, uh, you had a a booth there, and uh, you were giving out these great hand fans about, you know, know, I forget what the slogan was, but it was pretty much, you know, your freedoms are are alive and well here in the state of Texas. Well, here's what it said. It said... uh, Fast cars, firearms, and freedom. No place like Texas. That's Amen. Right. Amen to that. I don't that. know how I forgot that, but that is awesome. Yeah, we, I enjoyed, uh, enjoyed seeing your booth there at the Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, we had a great time at the, at the NRA 500, and, of course, I'm, I'm sure you're a huge fan of the Speedway and Eddie Gossage and, and, what, and, and what, they, uh, what they did and, and everything they've done for the NRA. Attorney General Abbott, we are honored to talk to you. We will see you in Houston, sir. I'll see you then.